Newborn babies sleep and they sleep all day long. You might say, that makes sense. They don't uh, have much to do. Might as well take a nap. Every now and then, they can take a nap. But this behavior doesn't stem from laziness or lack of chores. It's rooted in biology. Researchers took six-month-old babies and taught them a simple action sequence. Half of the babies took a nap uh, within four hours. Half stayed awake. 24 hours uh, later, they tested their memory and the results were shocking. Only the babies who napped remembered anything and the others showed complete memory erasure. We just discovered that over 8,000 children aged between 9 to 10 years who get less than 9 hours of sleep have measurably smaller brain volumes in regions controlling attention, memory and impulse control. And when researchers followed up two years later, the brain differences were still there. This isn't about kids being tired the next day when they miss their night sleep. No, we are talking about structural changes in the brain, permanent alterations in areas responsible for learning, for self-regulation and sometimes both. And the problem is far more widespread than we think. So how did we get here? How did sleep, one of the most fundamental biological needs, become optional in the lives of millions of children? It starts with how we, as a culture, think about rest. Most parents see sleep as downtime, a pause between the real activities like school, homework, sports and play. We've normalized the overtired child, the cranky toddler who skipped their nap, or the teenager uh, pulling all-nighters for exams. We celebrate busyness over rest. We tell ourselves kids can catch up on weekends and that losing a few hours here and there won't really matter. But it does. It does matter. Average school night sleep drops from 8.4 hours in a sixth grader to just 6.9 hours by the time one reaches high school grade. A quarter of children under five don't get enough sleep. We know that. And more than half of all American kids, that's 29 million of them, are sleep deprived. Sleep isn't passive. It's not a break from development. It is development. During sleep, the brain isn't resting. It's running a full-scale construction project. Imagine your child's brain as a city and sleep is the night shift that builds, reinforces and repairs everything that matters in it. Non-REM sleep replays the day's experiences and strengthens memory pathways, whereas REM sleep integrates these memories, builds new neural networks and clears out what's not needed. This is how children retain what they learn, they manage their emotions and they develop cognitive control. When kids don't get enough sleep, that construction crew never shows up. Memories aren't stored. Neural pathways don't form. Brain literally underdevelops. And now we have MRI evidence that sleep-deprived children show smaller grey matter volumes in the prefrontal cortex, anterior cingulate areas, temporal cortex and hippocampus. And these are all essential parts of our brain. These, all these areas are crucial for decision-making. They are important for impulse control, for attention and memory. These changes didn't just show up during periods of low sleep. They, they persisted for years and the behavioural consequences, they are devastating as well. Chronically sleep-deprived children struggle to focus. They forget what they've just learned. They act out, become more aggressive, anxious, impulsive. They show signs of ADHD. Some parents take their children to neurologists or psychiatrists suspecting learning disorders, but the root cause is often sleep deprivation. And it only gets worse in adolescence teenage years. Biologically, teenagers' internal clocks shift later by one to three hours. And that's biology, that's, that's physiology, and that's normal. They aren't being lazy when they stay up. Their brains are wired that way. But early school start times forces them to wake before they are ready in the morning. It's like trying to run a high-performance software on an uncharged battery. And especially during the very years when emotional regulation and risk-taking behavior peaks. Here's the good news. Now, just as the developing brain is vulnerable, it's also incredibly responsive. Now, children who begin to 
putting adequate sleep, even just an extra hour a night, show measurable improvements in mood, in their attention, in academic performance, and also emotional regulation. And as little as one to two weeks, more sustained improvements happens within one to three months. Science is clear. Sleep isn't soft parenting. It's cognitive medicine. Schools that start later see higher grades, fewer absences, and lower rates of anxiety and depression. This is a known fact. Families that protect bedtime routines report calmer households, better behaviors, and more resilient kids. So why aren't we doing this already? Because we have engineered a perfect storm of biological mismatch and societal pressures. First, screens. Blue light from phones and tablets suppresses melatonin and delays sleep. We literally placed sleep-disrupting text in the room where children are supposed to wind down. Second, we have scheduled kids beyond their limits. Schools, tuitions, sports, dinners, homeworks, revisions and so forth. Sleep becomes the first thing we cut. And then we show pride in our child's busy schedule. The third point, we have framed sleep as laziness. We applaud the student who pulls an all-nighter, the child with a packed calendar, the parent who powers through. And we've got it backwards. Sleep isn't the, the enemy of productivity. It's the foundation of it. And here's the part that should stop us in our tracks. Children who consistently sleep too little are more likely to become adults with chronic health problems, reduced learning capacity, and impaired decision-making. They carry higher risk of obesity, diabetes, depression, and even early death. Studies have linked adolescent sleep loss to increased car crashes, substance abuse, and suicidal behavior. We are not just raising tired children. We are engineering a generation with diminished cognitive potential. And not because of what we taught them, but because of how little rest we gave them. So what do we do? The path forward is simple and urgent. Start by ending screen use an hour before bed, and even two hours if possible. Create consistent sleep routines, even on, on weekends. Keep bedrooms cold, or at least cool, dark and distraction-free. For infants and toddlers, protect naps as non-negotiables. Advocate for school start times that match biological rhythms. And most importantly, shift the narrative. Sleep isn't a luxury. It's the most productive thing a developing brain can do. If you learned that a chemical in your child's food was shrinking their brain, would you let them eat it? Now that we know that chronic sleep deprivation is doing to developing minds, we can't pretend it's optional anymore. What are you going to do about it? After you've seen this video, if you have any comments, please make sure you put those comments below. It helps us a lot. And please, please, please do subscribe. Bye-bye.